It's so good to see you. It's so long. It really is. I know, well, like, I had to, I had to do the jumpsuit. jumpsuit. I had to do the jumpsuit and the crazy thing at the start of the show. You have as got a homage. to keep that jumpsuit as forevermore. Have you still got yours? Have I you still got the whole bit? And you can still get into them, I bet. I, I lend them out the whole time. Do you? Because so, everyone who's now in their 30s grew up watching me on telly. Right. right. So they're emotional and nostalgic about it I because it's the big year this year. It started off in children um, in need yeah. 30 years ago. And so all those projects are now celebrating huge anniversaries. That's amazing. So me and Dave, the sound man, <laughs> <laughs> will be charging around the country going to visit them all. Oh, and that's it's, brilliant, It's Annika. lovely that they're all still going. Exactly. And all, all around the world because... You know, I sold the format onto lots of other territories around the world. Right. So there's all these sort of projects. You know, it's just an what industry. A great legacy. That's it's an amazing industry. legacy. It's sort of my life's work, really. It's very much I'm very so. involved with. Very much so. But yeah. you were there. You were Queen of Saturday Night Telly. <laughs> amazing. And you just thought, no, nah, I'm going to. I'm just going to go and I'm just going to bring up my boys. I li I did. I went into the BBC Challenge. Annika was seven o'clock on a Saturday night I know. in between Noel's house party or whatever. <laughs> and I just went and said. Do you know, that's it. I'm just going to take a sabbatical. And they were really good. They, they were a bit upset because obviously yeah. it was pulling big ratings. Um, and I just sort of disappeared. And then I really got into it. I went to art college. Yeah. I, and I just enjoyed being out of that buzz. You, you had a life. Light. You actually because had a life. Because the thing about the programmes I did, they weren't programmes where you're in a nice, cosy studio no, like indeed, now. Like I was away. Like and my kids grew up... <clears throat> trailing around the country with me doing yeah. Challenge Annika, sitting in the buggy. Honestly, they were spending more time with Dave the Sound Man than, than <laughs> anyone else. Dave the Sound Man is a big bit, Dave, a big bit so, in your life. Dave, do you know the other... I was on the one show two weeks ago. Just, I didn't know. I was in to talk about something else, my stand-up career, and um, they had Dave the Sound Man hiding behind the sofa. Up he popped. Up the sofa. <laughs> yes. I'm never just going to get no, rid of this. One of the things I think is amazing is not only did you step away from stuff, and you, you said you didn't want to be... You were asked to be a Bond girl. I know Cubby Bro Broccoli called me in for the for the audition. Yeah. This was when I was in my 20s. And, um, I, well, I didn't know it was to be a Bond girl. I thought it was to be James Bond, possibly, or a certain... <laughs> well, a hey, spy. why not? Why not? And so when he said the word Bond girl, I just went, I really don't want to be a Bond girl. <laughs> I mean, I was really quite... I was such a feminist, you know, I was yeah. that, but I really was in those so, days. I don't want to be that. I don't want to, I don't want be, a to Bond be there yeah. to have sex with James Bond. Sorry. I'm very Good happy to you. hang out of a helicopter and kill some people, have a gun, abseil down. And we just sort of parted company. And now I look back and think, oh, God, for God's sake, you could have been a bong girl. I know. I know. And you still could, Annika. I, a bong granny. No, a bong woman. A, a bong, bong woman. woman. No, look, one yeah. of the things I think is hilarious about you, and you do you use this as a... Uh, no, it's, it's turned into this whole kind of stand-up that you do. It's for years, years and years and years, you didn't have an agent, but you did, but it was you. Clemmy Hart was Clemmy. your agent, oh, but you were Clemmy. So people would phone up and say, hello, uh, can I speak to Clemmy Hart, Annika's agent? And it was you on the end of the me. phone. No, I, I did so it. You, you, you were your own agent. It was a way of sort of keeping in touch with it. the world, yeah. but not wanting to do the work, because obviously I, I was busy painting at that stage, having yeah. exhibitions. I'd completely changed my life. But I was still getting... The work never stopped coming in. Sure. And it was just ridiculous. And every agent would sack me because um, I didn't want to do the work. You know, you know I just, I don't want, the, the final straw was being off of this show called Curry and Rice with me and Mark Curry Ooh. from Blue Peter. Oh, that sounds Alan Partridge. To do a day, <laughs> Alan Partridge with bells on, to do a daily cookery <laughs> studio in a studio in Stain somewhere. OK. And I said, I really don't want to grow old no. with Mark Curry. I love Mark Curry. Why, you get, indeed. But I do not want to be, <laughs> grow old. And my agent sat me and I just thought, this is ridiculous, who can I find? And then I just found this person who was so efficient, she was fun to deal with, yes. everyone loved her. It was, it was me! <laughs> And so if I'd phoned you up and said, Annika, I've got this cracking idea for I'd a new put show... On a, I'd have had a quick swig of gin and put on a very bad Scottish accent. <laughs> but the trouble with Clemmie, and, and, you know, she got into a lot of adventures and, yes. and scrapes, as you can imagine, because <laughs> she was very popular. People would go, Clem! They called her Clem, you know, it was so intimate. On the phone? Cause it never... No, no, e a lot of it oh, was... Oh, emails. Lots of work right. is done through yes, emails, of course, so of you course. could sort of hide mm. behind that. Mm. But it was like, Clem, you are brilliant. Why don't you come and join the BBC Netball team? You know, can you... Can Annika 
collect you off at six o'clock after work and all this sort of thing. So she had to have quite an elaborate backstory right. to stop her just being able to pop out and have drinks with people. Do you know there's a bra fitting service at the BBC? People would go, Clemmie, come along and do the bra fitting with us on Tuesday night. I had no idea. It's all going on at the BBC. Know, it's all going on. And um, no, and we carried it on for ages, <laughs> but it really got tricky because Clemmie would go, listen, I'd love to come out. I yeah. thought, you know, people would ask her away for the weekend. She was that popular. <laughs> and she'd have to go, I'd, I'd really love to come away with you, but I'm, I'm Annika's projects. I'm, yeah, I'm we're busy, so busy. She's very demanding. <laughs> and we're do she's, she's a real task marker. And I'm busy uh, raising money for her Romanian challenge. Oh, appeal. right, OK. And that was go, a big excuse. And they'd go, Clemmy, you're an inspiration. We, we, we need we love to... You. We're going we to give you an award. You. We need to support you. How can we donate to your... Oh, my no. gosh. So we had all this money coming in that right. Clemmy was raising. So Clemmy's your alter ego, it is yeah. you being yourself, being it, I think it's wonderful. Well, you know what it's like, you get offered all these jobs. I remember one was to go on safari, to, on safari for three weeks and learn to be a safari ranger. Right. I mean, how lovely. Amazing. Hanging out in a Amazing. safari lodge with Christopher Biggins, drinking cocktails in the evening, hunting jaguars. I couldn't do it because I had three children at yes. home needing to do algebra and a yeah. sort of, you know... And then you just get huge Clemmy inspiration. to tell. Clemmy wanted to do it, I didn't. So it, ah. it became a kind of... Um, it's it, really interesting. It was a bit of sort of installation <laughs> yeah. art, really, in a way. Is there anything that would tempt you back to telly? Like, I could see you would be brilliant uh, in the jungle. Would you, know, you do anything like that? No, no. you wouldn't. I ha I've, I've just done the Sky Arts Portrait competition. Oh, I love that. That comes love out that at program. Christmas. Fantastic. I've just done Kirsty's craft show. Great. Um, so I'm doing a lot of arty stuff, which is Good. what I do, because that's what I do. There's not a day that goes by when I'm not upcycling something or painting something. So that's... Excellent. I'm very, quite busy, actually. Yeah, I bet you And, and the stand-up thing's busy with the I know. People, so. so you're doing so much. And it's so lovely to see you, because we must just explain. We started our careers in... in TVM, a million years ago yeah. on TVM, yeah. when I was up in Scotland and you were on the sofa with I was on the, the, the late, great Mike Morris. I know. Ah, so we go back such Look, an arc of our lives. I know. We're still we'll here. need to sit and have a cup of tea. because we love you in the jumpsuit. Do you? Though. Well, I, that's it. Don't you think we need to get Lorraine doing it. treasure hunt? <laughs> no, no, I'll be Kenneth Kendall. No, I'm going to be Kenneth. Yeah, okay, you Clemmie, be Kenneth Kendall. Clemmie had a puppy called Kenneth. You be, you be that, I'll be Wincy Willis and we'll get somebody amazing to do all the running around. Annika, a joy. It was a joy Thank to you. you. Thank you so, so much.